the recording is in progress and we are ready to go hello everybody this is our monday pop-up show no frills no big openings no videos nothing like that just me and a bunch of people all hanging out here having a good time living it up let me start admitting them all let me make sure they're all real people yes they are uh there's uh, charlene and uh, there's jeff and there's charlie and there's edward and there's len and there's paula and uh yeah and uh let me see here um uh, mm -hmm. and uh marjorie i got to admit marjorie now she's joining us hold on a second there's mark miller and uh, we got to admit jeff i get jeff did got what happened to marjorie oh <laughs> What happened to Marjorie? Marjorie screwed up, ladies. Uh oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we'll just wait for Marjorie to try and sign in again. Uh, either that or she can just come in here. <laughs> How y'all doing? Pretty good. Good. Hey, a little light load here, but um, I imagine we'll be joined by other people as time goes on. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Here comes Marjorie. Not bad. Not there we bad. go. Admit Marjorie. Uh, mm, now she's connecting her audio, and now we and there's her picture. Hello, Marjorie. What happened to you? Just, just I I pressed the wrong button. Oh, okay. That's usually the case. <laughs> Who's practicing with me? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> was practicing with me I had to do it wrong. uh anyway let me just make sure we're going out okay here um because facebook has been screwing up on me when i tried posting shows but when i do them live yeah they go across so that's all that really matters i guess you know so uh hello to all of you uh hello to uh uh, uh let's see here everybody's here okay uh, yep. we'll, probably we'll be joined by others, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, gee, what a good week it's been, hasn't it? Huh? <laughs> well, what, what are you thinking about there, Alex? <laughs> I don't know. You know, when Bill Barr goes on TV, right? I and mean, you know how much we love Bill Barr, right? <laughs> and his line was, given all the circumstances and all that I can see, Donald Trump is toast. Those were his exact <laughs> words. And that he was really uh, he, he was really kind of uh, Trump's lawyer for years there, you know. If he gets convicted of even one of those charges, he's going down. Yeah. But he can still be president. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And if he have to make an oval, oval shape uh, cell. Let's, let's say yeah. they sentence him to 40 years in prison. Let's just be hopeful about something, okay? Does now he has to have uh what do you call it? Secret Service security. Right. Sure. So my question is, do they have to go to jail with him? <laughs> they, they do. They I mean, yep. they'll be able to, you know, They'll be able to come and go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, yes. Will, will they have a cell all their own? Yeah. You know. I would imagine they'd have to put him in some sort of a an area where he's got a couple of rooms and a, you know a little area for. Him. I don't think they'll put him in prison. Okay. I just don't think they'll put him in prison. I I, I normally we don't talk about politics, but come on, this is a big story. <laughs> this is fun. This, this isn't politics. politics. This is criminal stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think he's ever going to go to prison because I don't think they'll feel that's practical. Mm. You know? I mean, given who he is. So they might do something like make him uh, confine himself to a certain area, like you know, the rest. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 I suggest a bathroom in Mar a Lago. <laughs> there's, there's plenty to read in there. That's, that's what cool. I was going to say. Yeah, you got a lot of reading material, you know. <laughs> I think he and if you turn that into a cell, you know those documents are secure. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe how he cared for that kind of material. There was you know? a lot 
there's way more than I thought there was. Gonna but be. I mean, sitting yeah. on the stage in the ballroom at Mar-a-Lago. Right. I mean, come on. Anybody who was having a wedding there could see national secrets, yeah. you know. So and did and it did, did. Yeah. yeah, you know, did and did. Yeah, there's Mandy. Hey. Hey. There's the the Darla of our gang here, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, and and of course Paula has joined us today again as usual. Thank you so much, Paula. I appreciate that. But anyway, so I, all I'm getting sick of, though, is the press coverage of this. I mean, for the last five days, MSNBC has been almost nonstop with this story. Okay? And they're not saying anything new. You know, there's nothing new to report. It's just, what do you think will happen to them? What do you think will happen to them? Now they've gotten to the 10,000th person that's been on their programming saying this. And it's just... And today, Trump was leaving his uh, golf course in New Jersey and going to the airport. A helicopter was following him, and they were broadcasting it on MSNBC. They showed him landing in Miami, and he gets off the plane, and you see him waving like this. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. And then they pull back, and there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> he was waving at nobody? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then his 14 car motorcade drove away. I'm like, what? That's the other thing. How many cars do you need to have to protect you? Yeah. Uh, well, the fun moment was when when uh, uh, I was watching MSNBC when when the uh, when the um, they op they opened the the uh, indictment. And it was like kids with a candy store. They were so excited. You know, just, you know, like, it was like, and he did this. And he did this. You know, I was like, all right, I got that. I got that. Yeah. And, and now we'll go down to now we'll go down to Philadelphia where there's been a whole oh, highway wow. that's caved in. Uh, I, and, I, uh, I know and, that place. Oh, on, yeah. on it's still caved well. in, so there's nothing to report. Let's go back to Trump. What do you think <laughs> of the Trump case? <laughs> You know. Well, one person did die there. Really? Yeah, yeah. on I-95. They yeah. haven't identified him yet. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't hear that somebody Was died. it the person driving the truck? No. No, they don't even know who that was, last I heard. Wow. Really? Some kind of yeah, that was, that's, oh, quite a, that's quite a deal. I mean, it, it, at least we can get to Philadelphia, but people from Philadelphia can't get to Florida unless they live on the other side of Philadelphia. You know? Mm -hmm. But then again, who wants to go to Florida? Oh, here we go. Oh, Florida. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's what he was going to say. <laughs> I watched the Tonys last night. They did it from, uh, it's called the the United something or nothing theater up in Brooklyn High, up in the, up in the, uh, uh, what, 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 what are the heights called? The something heights. Manhattan Heights, but it, it's it's the northern part of Manhattan. It's, it's the tip of Manhattan. They didn't do it downtown like they normally did it. They did it in this theater, and it's a beautiful, gorgeous theater. I never knew existed. Did you, Jeff? No, never heard of it. No, never heard of but it. It's always that's the part of New York that nobody goes to Manhattan. Well, they, <laughs> they, last night they last night they did. Yeah, yeah, I never. Everybody who was gay went up to the heights yesterday. You know, I that's the other thing. I was watching, I was watching this thing, and please uh, correct me if you think I'm wrong in my thinking. But every gay actor that got up there, which if you're on Broadway, you're probably gay and an actor, uh, uh, you know, which is nothing wrong with. There was. You, do you know the reason why there are a lot of gay people in the in the theater? Bet you didn't know this little fact. <laughs> what happened was years ago, like in the 40s or 30s, when they would send road shows out, they would send them out to like San Francisco to do their show or wherever. They made the chorus boys all gay. And the reason they did it is they didn't want them having sex with the females. <laughs> because they didn't want that kind of drama to begin with. Some of them might get pregnant, whatever. So it was just, you hired gay chorus boys 
And, and that's how it all started. That's how they got in to the theater as a as a main uh, uh, thing. And uh, you know me. I mean, I'm I have nothing against gays in any way, shape, or form. I was an actor myself at one point, and I used to work in the theater. And there were a lot of gays around me. And my parents' be two best friends were gay. And I just never had an opinion about anybody who was gay. Hey, he's gay. He is right. Well, now I watch this show, and everybody who gets up gives a speech about being gay. You know. And how everybody should accept people who are gay. And I'm going, you know, you, I'm the choir, okay? So don't mm -hmm. preach to me, okay? You don't need to preach to me. And the people you're preaching to are going to say, fuck you anyway, you know? So just get on. Just be gay by example, you know? <laughs> and, and it was just one speech after another. And then the trans person won. And the trans person got up and cried and said, and I hope everybody who's trans gets to, to feel better about this. And I'm going, they're feeling better about a gay person or a trans person getting a Tony. So what else is new? You know, so I just I kind of found it off putting because I was insulted because all those years that I've really stood up for gays and cared about gays and not really was upset by somebody being gay. It was kind of like insulting to me. You know, I don't, am I wrong? No. The, the gay people and trans people feel like they're under siege right now. They're not you know, like was, I, I agree. It was, it was kind of much, but, but I can certainly understand it because, you know, if, if you, if you follow the news there, I mean. If you follow may, the they, news, they, Jews are under siege. <laughs> You know, there's a great uh, a movement of of this sort of thing in America towards uh, towards towards anti-Semitism, and I mean, blacks. I mean, I just I just feel that there's always the thing about well, we're more important to pay attention to. Than if you know, wait, wait a second. If you if you noticed that there there was a lot being said about anti-Semitism about the about the, the well, play. that's because of the play that I saw that play by the way, and for me, what did you think? Tom was Stoppard good? having Jewish guilt, okay, mm -hmm. for all these years not being particularly Jewish or identifying as Jewish, all of a sudden one day he realizes he's Jew Jewish and writes this play, which I think was kind of heavy-handed and didn't really understand things. You know, that was my take on watching it. But it, it won because it's about anti-Semitism. It's about uh, the Holocaust and Jews living in the Holocaust and uh, survival in the Holocaust. And uh, so, yeah, that wins, too. Uh, and, you know, I just I just didn't. I But I was just, you know, just get up and take those awards and be proud of the fact that you're gay and lead by example. You know, just be what you are. And by being what you are and being as talented as you are, you know, you're saying something to people. That's that's all, you know. But we know every it, it, we know that I would say 75 percent of that audience in that theater was gay. That's the theater. That's the way it is. So big deal. You know. By the way. Interesting. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the motion picture actors that we had years ago, now that was a time when you didn't say you were gay because you didn't want to lose an audience or whatever, were gay. Did you know, for instance, that Spencer Tracy was gay? I did not know that. See? See? Uh, that's just a perfect example of someone who hit being, hit being gay all those years from the public. And uh, his, his beard was Catherine Hepburn. I was going to say, so they really didn't have a real thing. I don't think they ever had that kind of thing. Let me put it that way. They, they were, were friends. They were very close, and I think they did love each other. I mean, I think you can, if you're gay, you can still love a woman, you know, just like, you know, I love Marjorie in spite of who she is. <laughs> Alex. Now well, there goes your dinner. <laughs> I said I love you here. What the hell? You know. But I mean, and then I read who, oh yeah, Walter Pigeon. Wow. The actor wow. Walter Pigeon was gay, quite gay. Huh. Used to hang out at that Richfield station that this huh. guy ran in Hollywood where he rented out boys. 
Oh, uh, and uh, there's some question about Cary Grant. Rand I was just going to say that, yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, a lot of these, in the old days, there were a lot of, the gays were, were in Hollywood just like they are in, in on Broadway now. And uh, um, the, the sad part about it was they had to hide it. Yeah. But some of them hid it just simply because they didn't want somebody to go to a movie and saying, well, he's gay, but how come he's kissing the actress? You know, so they didn't want that. They didn't want to be known for that reason, that they felt it would diminish the amount of roles they could get. In fact, it would do away with all the roles they could get. So a lot of them just hid it over the years. And uh, there's some they're hiding it to this very day, you know, uh, because they don't want the perception of them when they're doing an acting job. I mean, let's face it, if they're pay acting and they're playing a heterosexual, then they're really acting. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's always but, been rumors about Tom Cruise and about uh, Travolta, those guys. So who yeah. Knows? yeah. And so, you know, the question is, so what? But it's there. Let, let me put it, it this way. It's their decision to make as to whether they're going to come out. It's not somebody else's decision to make that they should. You know, uh, so, you know, uh, because and that's why if, uh, while they were alive, a lot of these actors, I wouldn't say were you know, we're gay. Of course, I didn't know it at the time. Shecky made me aware of all the gay actors in Hollywood <laughs> in the old days. And, uh, and yeah, it was. But, and, but the, anyway, so the, it was it was a nice night last night. I don't feel that any of the major contenders for best musical were particularly great musicals, you know, uh, but um I, I, it was just, it was nice. It was one of the, and they did it without a script because they couldn't have writers because of right. the writer's strike. And you know something? Just as good because half the time all these writers do are write dumb jokes for these people who are giving away awards. Yeah. And really this the show last night did not suffer from that. You know. And then what's her name? Ariana, uh, the host of the show, the uh, woman from West Side Story. She did a very good job. You know, she does, did a lot of dancing in the show, and she's a great dancer. So Ariana Du Bois. Ariana Du Bois, yeah. Um, by the way, gay. So, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I've always hated the way gays were treated in this country. I've always hated the way blacks were treated in this country. In fact, I've hated the way Jews have been treated in this country. In fact, I've been bothered by just about how everybody is treated. Yeah. <laughs> 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 talk against each other. Huh? We all pretty much talk against each other, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we've never been that nice, you know, if we think about it. We, we've just been kind of not that terrific, you know. Um, if you watch this thing, um, the uh, Kim Burns documentary on the Hol America and the Holocaust, uh, it's pretty telling, you know, that nobody really cared about the Jews. Okay. And uh, those that did were vilified. But, uh, you know, anyway. So, anybody been doing anything interesting? Okay. Uh -huh. You have. Oh, okay. Well, hold on a second. Somebody's done something interesting. Yeah. What were you going to say? Andy? Hey. Yeah. Said that I didn't do it, but my daughter went to the Belmont Stakes. Oh, cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Where? Where's the Belmont? Where? Where's that held? In Long Island. Island. Long Island. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she's living up here now. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that an expensive ticket? Instagram. Huh? I just saw it on her Instagram. So I texted her and I said, what is up with this? And she's like, yeah, it was really fun. Did any horse die? Yeah, I thought a horse died. Oh, oh, horse, really? Horses are dying. A two Dude, horses are dying? Terrible. Yeah. They inject them with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And their legs are bone skinny. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Churchill Downs. Up. Churchill Downs has uh, suspended their the rest of their racing season, and uh, the the horses were transported to Ellis Park for the remainder of the season. Which Ellis Park? Park? Ellis Park is another. It's owned by the same company that owns Churchill Downs, but it's in uh, 
uh, India, southern Indiana, right across from Evansville. Or right what near was it? What have they determined what it was about Churchill Downs that made all these horses die? No, they haven't determined what it was, but they, I guess, out of saving face or something, they decided to Do suspend the rest of the racing season. What? How many? How Seven many horses? I think. How many? Seven. 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 I heard. I think it was more than that. It was more than that. Really? Yeah. yeah. What are they dying of? Well, I know there were two that 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 uh, um, that had, they had injuries, serious injuries. That's what I thought. Yeah. Right. But what about the other five or whatever? I don't know. Who knows? You know. Uh, but I mean, uh, it. I don't know. Is horse racing cruel? Yes. It seems like well, I'm just so, asking yes. the question of everybody. Uh, I th I think it's cruel. I think yeah. it's cruel. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, uh, I remember once I went to uh, Penn Pen Pen Gillette, uh, and I think he was joined by Teller, came down to Florida when I was working there. And the two of them came, invited us to go to uh, my girlfriend and I to go to a a dog track. You want to talk about something that's horrible? Yeah. That dog track is disgusting. It is. Um, but, uh, and my girlfriend who loved animals went, this is horrible. This is cruel. I mean, she was, and they were, t they were telling her to shut up, just let her enjoy this, you know, and I'm, I'm agreeing with her, you know, it's just a terrible, horrible thing. And, um, but you know, it went in, it was on the dog uh, races. You know who you bet on? The dog that took a dump just before the race. <laughs> well, me and my ex husband would go to the one in um, Montgomery, Alabama. When I was, I, we had just started dating. I was in my early 20s. I was going, what in the hell? And like when you pull in, they have these people with tip sheets, you know, to give yeah. you tips. We went, I think, twice. I told him, I said, this is... Is that a dog track or... Yeah, it was a dog track in Montgomery, wow. Alabama. Yeah. And I was... I don't want to go anymore. This is gross. Like, Are, uh, are they still allowed to exist, the dog races? It was oh, yeah, they have plenty in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have that one in, Florida, in Alabama. It was yeah. called Big... Yeah. Well, as I say, in Florida, we, you know, um, that, that... So it was, it was kind of disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I remember the main thing Penn liked to do when he came down to see me down there was every morning go to the topless donut shop. <laughs> it, it was a topless donut shop, and the women were all topless serving donuts. <laughs> Bob was the imagination. I, did, I just don't know who, what morning some person woke up and said, I got a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> How do you come up with this idea? <laughs> you know, doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me. You know, I don't think a woman came up with that idea. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> well, unless it was a woman who wanted to make money selling donuts. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Could be. Um, and uh, I did they close them down finally? I don't think so. I think they just finally went out of business. People got. Tired of paying extra for a donut just to yeah. see a woman's breasts. Yeah. Uh, like it isn't something we haven't all seen, right? Yeah. So anyway, so the, uh, other than what's going on with our, our dear former president, uh, <laughs> and, and what I hate about it all is that I was sick of him in the first place. Do we have to hear from about him some more? Yeah, for back in the news. Two years, it was kind of quiet, nice. Now he's in every news cycle every night. Yeah, and and the the news people are making the same mistake they made in 2016. They gave him way too much publicity. Mm. You know, this is a guy. He's kind of like Beetlejuice. If you say his name, you can't get <laughs> rid of him. But if you don't say his name, he can't appear. You know, and if you don't mention Donald Trump, hey, you know, mention him when he really does something important. And hey, he got uh, he got busted the other day. Great, you mentioned that, and then you move on to other stuff. You don't have five days of constant panels of lawyers saying the same thing over and over again, which is only getting him publicity and is only making his uh, acolytes 
uh, uh, you know, think he's the greatest thing since toast. I mean, it's it a great. lot of fundraising off of it. A lot of mm -hmm. fundraising. Uh, in fact, he looks upon it as a fundraising opportunity. Absolutely. It wasn't five minutes after he got indicted that they sent out all these letters to his donors. You know, well, I'm in trouble and I really got to need money for my defense. What do you mean? I thought you were a billionaire. What happened to that uh, that illusion? You know, I, I thought you had the, all that kind of money. I just, you know, I don't understand. Uh, and tomorrow when he flies back to New Jersey, he's going to have another press conference. Right after and, he gets in. a fundraiser. What's going to be fun this time, I think he's going to have to be fingerprinted. Yeah. And photographed. And a mug shot. Right. <laughs> Which, yeah. by the way, the minute anybody lays their hands on that mug shot, mm -hmm. it's going to be there are going to be so many memes out there with that mug shot in it. T-shirts. Yeah. T-shirts. T-shirts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. My uh, wife just got the Michael Cohen book from the library and I started reading it this afternoon. Yeah. The one Revenge? called Revenge. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How is, is it? it? Is it any good? Oh, yeah. It, it's uh, it's captivating from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. He's talking about this orange faced turd. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, sound, he always sounds like a New Jersey mafioso anyway. Who? Michael. Um, oh, Michael Cohen. Cohen? Yeah. yeah. Cohen's kind of like a, a not too good lawyer. You know, Jewish <laughs> uh, lawyer uh, who, uh, uh, you know, got caught up in the middle of this whole thing. You know, here's he the went thing. to jail. He went Here, to jail. Here's the horrible thing. I would not want he like he right now he got rid of two lawyers and he's looking for new to, another, two lawyers to replace them. And nobody he is coming so forward. So many lawyers. Because number one, he's he's known for not paying his lawyers. Yeah. And if if by some act of fate he does, then they stick around long enough, they're going to get arrested by the cops. You know, they're going to get something thrown at him because Cone went to jail. Who else went to jail? Um, you know, and Manafort. The, the, the Manafort. And Trump has no uh, loyalty. He expects loyalty from everybody else, but he has no loyalty. I mean, this guy, uh, what's his name, Nada? Yeah. The one that was... I think he was a former um, he, he, in, the, in the Air Force. No, he was, he was in the Navy. Service. He was in the Navy. Navy. And then he be, he was a culinary specialist is what he was. Mm -hmm. So then he wound up at the White House as an as a uh, aide to Trump. And then when Trump left the White House, he left, I guess, the Navy and went to work for Trump. Well, this guy's been very loyal to Trump. OK, and now he's been charged. This is not a cheap charge, right? There's nothing that you go out and get a cheap lawyer, right? You better get ready to be spending many hundreds of thousands of dollars to defend yourself. And I don't think that Donald Trump is going to pay the freight on that. Well, that's what he usually does, because that's how he keeps the people under his thumb, which is that he pays their legal fees. Well, so no, they belong to him that well, way. I don't think this is going to be the case here. I don't think he, if, but if he doesn't pay Nada, I think what's going to happen is he's going to turn on Trump. You know, why not save your own ass? You want to go to jail for 20 years for this? No. Bill Barr even said that if Nada yeah. turned on Trump, then Trump was toast. No, he said that he said Trump's toast anyway. You know. Meanwhile, there's this judge. Well, oh. what, 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 you know, like I, I, I was feeling pretty good. And then I heard about who the judge was. It's going to, the, the, it's going to be the judge for the case. And I said, what, her? No. Mm -hmm. Well, she's this not the just judge for the arraignment the tomorrow. Just for the arraignment. And just for the initial. They, yeah, but they're not sure whether she's going to be the, the, uh, the judge or whether uh, or. They don't think so. And they think she doesn't <laughs> want to be either, you know. That she just had too much problem with the last thing, and she doesn't. She doesn't want that spotlight on her, you know. She has a part-time job on that. She has a what? <laughs> it's a part-time job. It's a part-time job. Yeah. Yeah, sure it She'll is. Be up um, there for for an hour, and then it'll be it. 
Yeah, but I think I think she's going to be better than you think she's going to be because I think she knows the whole world is now watching her with a jaundiced eye. Uh, delay, delay, delay. Well, we'll get, he'll he'll try and delay things. Of course, if she's a good judge. She'll make sure he can't. She yeah. won't. Because I mean, uh, what's his name? The guy who's prosecuting him, Jack Smith. J Jack Smith said that he wants to get this thing up and running as fast as possible. Get it out of the way. He wants he wants he wants the trial to happen in the in the fall. No, yeah. I said spring, early spring now. Uh, early spring. Oh, okay. The common wisdom is that it's, uh, that it will be a, at least a year. We're going to be stuck with with hearing about this for a you long know, time. The thing is, and the, other, you know, and the other two aren't even in yet. The other two <laughs> cases aren't even in yet. This is Georgia never, and, and January 6th. But this yeah. has never happened before, you know? And and so how do we handle it? I mean, supposedly, if he gets convicted and he's president, uh, he can go to jail and still be president. Oh, he'll yeah. pardon himself. Yeah, he'll pardon himself. Well, I don't think he can do that. I, I on, Am I right, um, Vernon? I don't think he can do not that. that I can not can I can find now he's arrogant think. enough to think that maybe he can yeah but I don't think there's any legal precedent for him pardoning himself that would be that would be that would be met with a great deal of resistance both in the courts and every other place ultimately it would go to the Supreme Court though who knows what they'll say yeah well, I think they Say no. <laughs> There's well, an exception. Yeah. Not. But I, you know, so anyway. Well, look what happened recently, though, with the Alabama redistricting. Roberts and uh, Kavanaugh sided with the liberals to uphold the the circuit court decision that that was uh, bogus. They were bogus districts. It may yeah. happen in other states now, too. It's by the way, that's by the, the only way. good news we got. Yeah, get off this subject because we don't really get. We're not. Are we is this political or is this just? Alex, you started it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just couldn't figure out anything else to say. Anyway, the horses, girl. Huh? We the horses. horses. Yeah, the horses. Yeah, but the the, the the biggest news in our lives. You want to know what the biggest news is in our lives? The scaffolding in our courtyard has been taken down. What? Oh. That has been three years? Wow. Something? something like three years. The scaffolding outside the building is still up, but it's got about another two months from what we've been told. Wow. Cool. And then the, the scaffolding out in front of our building, which I refer to as the homeless shelter, <laughs> uh, it will, will be coming down too. But at least we got our courtyard back. But there are all the marks from the scaffolding on the pavement, like the squares, you know, where they put. So I think somebody's got to go in there and scrub and do a they, bunch. They of could stuff. do some landscaping in there too. I think. Well, they could stand to do some landscaping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, we have uh, the trouble is that we have um, landlords who, when this building was first bought, they obviously were slum lords because this was a slum. Mm. And they got awfully used to that, and uh, they haven't kind of gotten out of that mindset yet. You know, like maybe we should make this a really nice courtyard. Let's let's refurbish it. You know, so really, it would like for instance, Marjorie, I, and our next door neighbor here, we were the ones in charge of keeping the garden going. Oh wow! And he would come in and plant tulips and a whole bunch of stuff. You know, uh, but. I mean, why should we take care of it? It's kind of like, you know, you kind of say to yourself, like, I would love to do things to this apartment because, hey, you know, it 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 need it could stand to have a restoration of sorts. But I'm not going to do it because it's only going to be for the benefit of the owners. Mm -hmm. You know, the owners should want to come in and do it. Of course, they would do it for me, but uh, they would do a horrible job of it. And secondly, they'd raise our rent because they, they're allowed to do that if they make improvements. So we wouldn't be rent stabilized anymore. We'd be rent stabilized. So we like the rent the way it is. <laughs> you have the best deal in town. Yeah, we do. We do. But we I think we're gonna have to fight every minute for it. We you do. Know? Yeah. 
you have to fight every minute for it uh, because it's just not, uh, it, 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 well, we're going to have to fight every minute for it. But so anyway, so we got our, we got a, at least we, we've got somewhat of a decent uh, courtyard again. Um, so, but the outside still is, you know, what I, what's amazing, did you say this, Marjorie, they put up scaffolding around your building where you worked? And they kept yeah, it. And, I didn't, and it, it was, was there, there for so like, long that when they finally took it down, I didn't recognize the building. Because <laughs> of which building was yours, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was there for so long, you just get used to it. We went up the street to go to our park, and I said to Margie, oh, the building scaffolding is gone. And she said, there was scaffolding on that building? She didn't even recognize the building. <laughs> and neither did I, really. You know, it seems like Am I? Is it my imagination, Marjorie? Are there more buildings with scaffolding on them now? Than we've well, there's ever a lot of old buildings that they have to keep up the code, so they have to do work on them. Yeah. I don't think they'll have to do this for another hundred years. I guess. Yeah. What is it? Every well, thirty. Years? building before then. You think so? Yeah. You really think so? I don't think so. How's everything in Texas, Charlie? There's there's another topic. It's hot. It's hot. How hot is it? So hot. hot. I saw a squirrel rubbing lotion on his nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of the uh, Letterman jokes. What? It was 99 degrees in the 6.30 game on Friday when I was on fire. Well, that's wow. humid. And is it humid? Very humid. Because we had a lot of rain before that. It, it, yeah. Houston, I found when I lived in Houston, I could not keep a crease in my pants all year long. Because the humidity is pretty horrendous there, you know? Uh, it's supposed to be getting hotter down there by the weekend, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be 106 on uh Oh, Thursday. geez, <laughs> almighty. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't remember it ever getting that hot when I lived there. Well, you know, oh, I know what we had since we talked last. We had our red, our red city here, our red skies. Oh, that's great. oh yeah, yeah. They had have a, you ever seen that before in New York? No, no, not that not bad. like this. Not like it this. was the worst yeah. pollution in the world at that particular <clears throat> time of the day. Yeah, in yeah, the no. world. Yeah, we had the worst uh, air pollution in the world. All well, thanks to Canada. Yeah, but I mean, it was it was really, really bad bad it was scary it was um, i was sitting here i was interviewing uh chuck farnham i was doing one of my interviews for the late show that i do during the day and then so i did the i turned it on all of a sudden i'm looking and i my lighting is changing because i have all this light coming in through the window and i have to accommodate for it and i finally after i'm through with the first interview i did I look out the window and the whole sky is just red it's like it's nighttime with a red sky yeah we had it here in California. Uh, we, you had it with those fires too, but I hear this was worse when it came to to it literally, yeah. you know, air pollution. I sent it, you a photograph, Alex, that I took last September. My wife and I went on a cruise, Alaska cruise. Right, out of I Seattle. saw that. You said, yeah, I got it. Yeah, you got the photo. Yeah, was that when they had all the all the fires in California? No, that was out. That was from uh, Eastern Oregon. Is where they were having fires, and that's what caused that. It, it was really strange. They had that layer. There was smoke above and smoke below, and blue sky in between. I, wow. I just happened to look out the window of the airplane we were flying from Portland, Oregon, to Seattle, and mm -hmm. I had to snap that photo because it was so. It was. It was awesome mm. to see two different layers of smoke with blue sky in between. Yeah, there's wow. this guy in between in this picture. I'll show you the picture later, Marjorie. Yes, Jeff. Well, well, I'm in Connecticut, but whatever Alex was talking about, what was going with that poison all over the place, the colors and all of that stuff, it's pretty much gone. But there's for something, now, for now. Yeah. But there's something weird about it. The wind keeps going up, changing. There's a whole bunch of things going on that are unusual. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I I, I can't tell. Well, if you go outside, you'll see. I mean, I, I see it because I'm right. But see, I don't have to go outside because we have such a view out our windows. 
Yeah. That we see the city, we see the skyline. I know, yeah. I know. And but I'm looking at the grass and the trees and all of that around wait, here. Wait a minute, I, oh, I know what I can show you here. Hold on a second, wait a minute. Where Charlene has her hand up. Yes, Charlene. Oh, I was just gonna say when we had it here in California, I was in the kitchen cooking and I looked out the window and I saw the, the sky. I went into the living room to make sure my husband was there because I thought it was this resurrection. I thought maybe he left me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We had that too. oh, wow. That's from our window. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's accurate in terms of the, of the color? Yeah, absolutely. It was red oh, though when I came home. came home. In fact, it was like, it might have been worse a few hours, an hour earlier than that. Science yeah. fiction movie. But if I a lot of people went down, shot down in the streets, and you couldn't shoot past two blocks. That's mm -hmm. how thick it was. <laughs> and uh, it was, wow. uh, you know, that uh, that's the that's what the apocalypse is going to look like, folks. I'm sorry, you know. So a little preview there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, after I saw that post, Alex, I was like, what is going on? So I did a little bit of, you know, I was like Googling it and everything. And then I texted my daughter and I said, hey, how are you doing it? You know what? You got all this crickets for like three days. <laughs> and then she finally said, it's fine now. <laughs> Thanks for waiting three days to tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it it looked like that. It was scary. You know, it was just very scary. I didn't go. My out. son works outdoors with uh, Lamar Advertising and. They had to shut down their outdoor painting crew two days. It got so bad. Well, uh, also, you, you had things like uh, this woman. Uh, remember the woman on Killing, uh, what is it, Killing Eve? Remember that show? Yeah. yeah. Um, the woman who played the woman who's trying to kill Eve. Uh, blonde. Is she blonde? I guess she is. Yeah. Comer is her last name. She won last night, by the way. Her best so actress in the drama. Anyway, uh, she was doing this show on Broadway called Prima Facia. And um, uh, it's getting very good reviews. And she, that night, she couldn't do the show because she couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. So her understudy had to go on and do it. And it's a one woman show. So that understudy really was a, you know, a real understudy. Had to be, be aware of the whole show and everything. Why don't they give you money back on your ticket if it's a one woman show and you go to see it because you want to see that actress? And now they say, Sorry, tonight our main actress is being replaced by so and so. Yeah. Shouldn't they like go through the audience and hand out like $20 bills or something <laughs> to give you a refund? Maybe I don't understand Broadway that well. <laughs> What's his well, name? What I was gonna say, maybe some people are like. Ooh, let's go see it when it's, you know, somebody unknown. Maybe we'll see somebody making a breakthrough and we'll, we can say we saw her, you know. Yeah, yeah, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, I'm grasping. Yeah, yeah. But, and can you imagine being, an, I guess you get, you don't have to come to the theater every night waiting. I, I imagine they know ahead of time if you can do it or not do it. Or maybe you have to come to the theater. I don't know. And do you get paid for being an understudy? Mm -hmm. These are questions the Tonys don't answer. Really? Dang. Did you know the Yankee game was canceled one yeah. day? Yeah. 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 First time I ever heard of that. Except for rain or something like that. Yeah, but it was a red skies at warning, sailor take warning, red skies at night, sailor's delight. I think it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. What happens if it's in the midday? <laughs> they go either way yeah yeah but uh anyway so you know um and otherwise the, the weather's been pretty good here actually what is the temperature now is um oh i hate to say this uh charlie it's 76 <laughs> degrees in new york <laughs> yeah thanks a lot it's 80 here yeah it's 80 there okay yeah and where how much is it where you are uh uh, Vernon, 65. 65? 65. Wow. Well, how about you? Hot. How about you, Jeff? 73. 73. This is our new show called What's the Temperature? Where you? It's <laughs> <laughs> exciting. I got a t shirt. Isn't it amazing? Like, we didn't used to know this. All we have to do is look at our phone now. Yeah, 
right. Ah, you know, what's the temperature where you are, uh, Paula? It's uh, in the 60s, I'm sure. It's, 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 uh, it's cold today. Wow. How about yeah. you? Uh, 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 we haven't heard a word from Edward Berger today. That's right. Yeah, it's 72 over here. 72 where you are. Six. Look at Charlie. 96 in Austin. What did you say? 96. 96. How about you? How about you, uh, Charlene? What's your 68. 68. 68 and uh, uh, Len LaFerce. Yeah. 74. It's been really cool here. It's only a few degrees more than me, and oh. we're just like a half an hour apart. Yeah. yeah. And it's supposed to rain at four. It was supposed to rain at four, I think. Has it rained yet? Not yet. The thunderstorm or something. Maybe it's five. Now it says seven. Seven for a thunder thunderstorm? Well, seven, 80% chance. Yeah. That's what we do on this program, folks. We talk about the weather. <laughs> Well, we're all around the country. Yeah. Well, I have the, I have the air conditioning on because when it's like 76, like it is, I then have all the heat from this equipment yeah. as well. So I got to cool the room down a little bit. So I'm comfortable, you know, um, but uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, the weather's, I, it, this is kind of unseasonal, isn't it? Aren't we usually a little hotter by now in, in June? June? Yeah. yeah. They say it's going to be a hot summer once it starts, I guess. It's going to be a hot summer? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the air conditioning bills. Yeah. So anyway, what else is happening? Anything else happening that we... We've talked about the Tonys. We've talked about the Trumps. We've talked. Uh, by the way, I want to know that Trump plane. You've seen the Trump plane says Trump on the side, so he knows which one is his. Right. <laughs> uh, it says Trump on, on the side. Is that maybe the only plane left over from Trump Airlines? It, Probably. It, I don't know where he got. Kind of looks like it because I think that's the way they looked. Let me take a look here. He yeah. had a he had a fleet. Yeah. 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 Airlines. Yeah, yeah. airlines yeah. That's one of the things that failed. This great he had, he had the shuttle, huh? He had the shuttle from like, he went shuttle. here to yeah. Washington and yes. Trump yeah. the Trump shuttle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have shuttles anymore? We used to have them. Uh, I don't know. You know, well, they would just go to like one other town. And that's yeah. it. You know, but um, well, just think about the airline industry and how it's consolidated. When I was younger, there were at least five what could, what were considered mid-major airlines that operated out of our city, and some of them don't don't even exist anymore, like Piedmont, Allegheny. Mm -hmm. They're gone. All right. So it looks like that <clears throat> plane was purchased in '91 by Sterling Airways, went to TASA, Vulcan Northwest, TAG, and on 2011, DJT, Donald J. Trump Operations. So it was not one of his plans. Oh. Hmm. And, and how old is that plane? 32 years old. Oh, well, it's time to crash. Yeah. <laughs> With him in it. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody told me the plane I was riding in was 32 years old. I think I feel uncomfortable. Yeah, that's getting toward the end of its life. Sir. Well, yeah, I'd feel uncomfortable, but I've, I've heard that some of the planes still flying today are like 40 years old, 45 oh, yeah. years old. The other thing that contributes is how many takeoffs and landings. And of course, a commercial airliner would be doing that all day well, and his wouldn't be. So it's probably OK. So it's how many times it's been pressurized and depressurized. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what really determines the airworthiness mm -hmm. of the frame. Yeah. Because why? Because the pressurization. Yeah, it flexes. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah of course. But I didn't realize that's what determined the lifespan of a plane. Yeah. After a while, they get metal fatigue, and it's time to, to get yeah. rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. So, um, so it's it's been a it's been an interesting week uh, news wise in that respect. Uh, and um, you know, I'm just uh, I'm still tired all the time. Marjorie and I go for a walk, and then she says. I force them on the march. Yeah, it's what I call my my. Good death. for you. 
my death march. Death march. <laughs> <laughs> well, we take this walk up the uh, up to uh, what Morningside park. park. Yeah, either that or we go down to the mirror. And there's one other park we go to. It's amazing. New York City has all these little parks all over it. You know, no matter where you and live, there's a park, and they're all beautiful. Yeah. They're all well. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. And now they're being taken care of more than they ever have in the past. But we used to have one Tompkins Square Park down where we used to live. That place was in the middle of Alphabet City, and it was a dangerous place at night. I remember when Central Park was dangerous. When oh. I lived on West 89th Street, no one would walk into Central Park at night. You could That's get attacked by pigeons. Yes. Yeah, right. You could be attacked by pigeons. <laughs> Um, uh, they well, they used to have a place in Central Park, uh, called the uh, what was it? Oh, they had a name for it. The, all the gays went there, and uh, there was a name for it. If I had if I had Albert here, he would know immediately, <laughs> not because he's gay, but because he would know what it was called. It was called the Rambles, yeah, it was called the Ramble. oh, Rambles, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, and the only reason I called my show at night the ramble was I thought I might attack some gay guys, you know, I mean. <laughs> well, you have, you know, they try to, they try to Zoom bomb you all the time. They're yeah. Not the gay guys. <laughs> it, it seems so, when they Zoom bomb you, they Zoom bomb you with gay porn, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and uh, I got to tell you, you know, um, <laughs> who was it? I can't remember the comedian. Who who said something and and the gay community was mad because I thought they were funny. He said, "I don't know about you." He said, "But as a heterosexual male, a man's hairy ass just does not appeal to me." <laughs> and um, I might ask the women in this audience, "How how does a man man's hairy ass appeal to you people?" Not, not at all. It. Not at all. Not, not at all. Not at all. So. Yeah. I, Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> uh, they always have these videos of these hairy rear ends and yeah. things plunging into them. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going, why are they doing this? I mean, they could do, do, you know, hetero porn and it would still not be broadcastable, you know, but no, they, they, they go with this stuff. So I, I figure that's strange, but we don't get them that much anymore. But that's still why I have to be careful about who I let on here. Um, so, that's for sure. so anyway, does, if Marjorie and I are trying to figure out where to go on vacation. I'm not doing anything till our lease is resolved. Well, that's not till December. Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry. We leave it to the lawyer to take care of it, and we go on our vacation. But we're we're in Portugal is, and Spain. Uh, well, we got a we got a uh, plan already mm -hmm. for October, and we're going to go to Portugal mm -hmm. and then into Spain, and it's all uh, on a little small ship, a small ship. That's what we want to do. Well, I saw. Well, really, you know, if you can drive, I mean, if you're in Portugal, you just drive over to Spain. Sure. You know. But there is one boat trip I saw, and I pointed out to Marjorie that I think is wonderful. It 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 leaves Portugal, and then it goes past Gibraltar, goes to Gibraltar, and then it goes down to Morocco. Well, that sounds that sounds great. Yeah. That sounds like it. Doesn't that sound good to you, Marjorie? I've been to Morocco. Yes, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't been to Portugal or Spain. I was at the Spanish uh, airport where I had to transfer airlines, and that was about as far in Spain. Did you, did, when you were in Morocco, did you try a, a substance called Keef? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But you know why you don't find Keef here? Why it's not in New York, for instance? They don't like say, oh, let's we have some Keef. We got it down in Morocco. Here it is. Because it doesn't travel. I have to tell you. It doesn't I was travel in, well. In Casablanca, one of the places in the market, wherever you go in the market, that's the first thing they offer you is hash cookies and tea and keef. 
and I had some of the hash cookies and coming home from uh, on the airline, I flushed them down the toilet. I was so nervous about going <laughs> with those things. Well, I, my, I have an old story about Spain. What happened was, is that I got to know these people who were spending time on a beach. <clears throat> and uh, this one woman told me, hey, if you get to Spain, anywhere in Spain, go to the local pharmacy and pick up a little uh, some pills called Dormadinas. And they came in a little uh, plastic uh, container that was blue. And then it had two rows of like five Dormadinas each, 10 to a box. And they were like a buck 25 each, American money. Okay. Blue pills. And they said, so get those. And, uh, and the reason you wanted to get them, you know what Dormadinas were? They were what? quaaludes. Oh, oh wow. They were, half a, they were half a dose of quaaludes per pill. Wow. Quaaludes were the best. But, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, you got these Dormadinas, you got these Dormadinas, and you would, uh, you know, I, I so I, I decided I had to get them. So it, I, I said, the minute I landed and got a hotel room, I immediately hit the street, you know, to go looking around. And of course, I couldn't find a pharmacy that was open because it was siesta. Right. After siesta, I finally found one, and it was kind of like the first time I ever bought a, bought uh, condoms, you know. Mm -hmm. And you go in, and you you I'm really shy, you know. And I go, um, gee, and they go, "What do you want?" And then I just went, "Oh, forget it." And I left. I couldn't get. <laughs> I couldn't believe that you could buy quaaludes over the counter in Spain, and that the minute I ordered them, I'd have handcuffs on me. Okay, so now I found. I said, "That's ridiculous," you know. So I went into another one, and I finally went. Um, Dormadinas, and they said, Quando? And I went, oh, that means how many? And I went, Dose? And they gave me two two little uh, uh, boxes of Dormadinas. Two, two boxes? Here I get them. Yeah, two little boxes of them. So now I'm figuring, this is pretty good. So I went to every pharmacy I could find and ordered two of them <laughs> everywhere. Now I've got 10 boxes. Of <laughs> Could you bring them back to the U.S.? And I'm going to Ibiza. I wouldn't think so. I'm going to Ibiza. Now, granted, I could probably just take them on the plane and, you know, it's Spain, right? Yeah. I'm too afraid to take them on the plane with me. Well, it was like me with the hash cookies. Yeah. 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 So I, I down the toilet, they went. And when I got to Ibiza, they said, uh, so, well, what, did you bring any drugs with you? Because they wanted me. They thought maybe I had some marijuana. They love marijuana there because all they can get is hash. OK. And I said, uh, no, I did have some Dormadinas. Where are they? I said, I, I flushed them down the toilet. And went, <laughs> Why? I said, I was afraid I'd get arrested. And I don't want to get arrested in Franco, Spain with these things. And it turned out you could have them and just like crazy. And so what would happen is some people would go back to the United States with them. And the United States didn't have this on a contraband list. Mm. They'd say, what are these and why do you have 200 packages of them? <laughs> <laughs> and I know guys that would actually tell the people at the airport, well, I can't sleep. And these things are terrific. <laughs> I just bought as many as I could so I won't run out. And they went, OK, fine, go ahead. They didn't know about Dormadinas. Hmm. They were the best. What, Quaaludes? Yeah. Yeah, well, Dormadinas were, you know. So, so Alex, it means you're not a, you're not a good enough liar. That's right. I know it's I'm a big <laughs> enough coward is what it is. <laughs> but you know, it was strange. Um, um, I this woman I knew her name was Ginger J. Walker. I that was her real name, Ginger J. Walker. And Ginger lived on a in Ibiza, and she had these, you know, Dormadinas. So we're out to dinner one night, and she says. Uh, would you like a Dormadina? And I look at my watch and I say, well, seven o'clock now I do my show at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's a, it's a light dose. So it would, I would not be high by the time I went on the air. So I said, sure. And I took one. So about a half hour later, she says, are you high? And I went, no, I'm not high. And she said, well, here, have another one. So I, think, well, I, look at the watch. I go, Hey, if I take it now, blah, 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 blah I'll be, I'll, I won't be high by two o'clock in the morning. So she gives me another one. 
Well, by the end of dinner, we I had had about four of them because none of them were taking. <laughs> some reason i said she said i can't believe that i said well they're just for probably all duds you know <laughs> she was, i can't imagine that i said well i don't know so now i go to work right and i go on at two o'clock in the morning and about four o'clock in the morning my guest is of all people jack nicholson oh jeez. <laughs> and i'm sitting there at a table across from jack nicholson interviewing him when all of a sudden, all the Dormadinas decide to hit at one time. <laughs> and I'm trying to interview this guy who looks like Jack Nicholson, right? Uh, and, and, and have a, a show with him. And then I go to a break and I finally look at Jack and I go, God damn it, I am high. And he says, you look it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Dormadina story. That uh, should be the Jack Nicholson story, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the thing he didn't do with me, I had a girlfriend there that night, and he took her to the bathroom and, and gave her some Coke. Oh, Jesus. You know? Oh, Jack was a, a real player then. Mm, okay. I don't know if he is anymore, you know. Uh, but uh, but uh, it was amazing. It's amazing. Hey, listen, we've, we've gone over our time here. Where does it all go when we're having fun? Right. <laughs> Charlene, always nice seeing you here, kiddo. Yeah. I saw your last name Solis somewhere like yes. a, in a tennis Solis. man. Was it a tennis oh, man? Oh, really? I don't know. I don't know. I just saw the name Solis. Yeah, it right. wasn't me. They said it was Portuguese. <laughs> Is it Portuguese? It's, it's uh, Hispanic. Hispanic, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Wallace, what kind of name is that? Wallace. It's Scottish. I know it's Scottish. <laughs> I saw the Mel Gibson movie. <laughs> anyway, and he's got Einstein today. That's just yeah. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, Einstein had a great face, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Just a <laughs> face for the ages. Huh? Physics rocks. <laughs> so, no, ge I thought geology rocks. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, appreciate it, uh, uh, Len. Always nice having you thank here. You, sir. Uh, 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 Paula, yeah. nice to have you around as well as Jeff. Marjorie, not so much, but you know, <laughs> has the dinner come yet? No. no. We ordered <laughs> Chinese food for dinner. The nice Chinese food. Yeah. Vernon Nunn, thank you so much. And of course, Mandy, always wonderful to have you here. Uh, and finally, our good friend Edward Berger signs us off by saying, That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.